Hi everyone, I'm Karthik, a high schooler extremely interested in the field of computational biology and machine learning. Today I'll be going over hidden markup models, a probabilistic model that has surprising implications in the biomedical field. The immensity of the human genome creates a pressing issue for many researchers wanting to make conclusions off the information received from the human body. Because there are trillions of cells inside of the human body, it's hard to define functions for the different parts of genetic information that are inside of the cell. One area of concern is finding areas that mimic promoter or CPG islands. In short, CPG islands have to fulfill three main criteria. They have to be less than 200 base pairs, they have to have a cytosine and guanine percentage of higher than 50%, and they also have to have a CPG ratio of higher than 60%. Because CPG regions often play a great role in DNA methylation and focus on gene transcription and regulation, it is vital to find these regions to control the production of genetic pathways. However, it is really hard to make these inferences because of how much information there is inside of the human genome. Currently, there are three methods of trying to figure out the function of a specific nucleotide sequence, meaning labeling the sequence as a promoter, repressor, intron, extradon, etc. You can either align the sequence with well-known parts of the human genome using the BLAST algorithm, visualizing the sequence to find disparities inside of the sequence that could give a clue to its function, or model it through generative models to infer the function of the sequence. We'll be tackle tackling the latter part with HMMs or hidden markup models. So now that we've gotten the background out of the way, let's get right into it. HMMs often have two states, the hidden state and the observed state. The hidden state causes the observed state, in a way, and leads to the so-called emissions. This is better explained through an example. We'll take a real-life example, where the hidden states, or the seasons, infer the observed state, or the weather pattern. This can be either sunny, rainy, cloudy, or windy. The probability of a certain hidden state inferring an observed state varies depending on this example. For example, it makes more sense that the probability of it being windy during the winter will be greater than it being sunny during the winter. The picture here represents a great example about how these actually work. Note that the hidden states are marked as pi, while the observed states are marked as the vector x. The emission probability is simply the probability that a certain observed state occurs depending on the hidden state. Meanwhile, the transition probability is the probability that a hidden state moves from one hidden state to another. We'll talk more about transition probabilities later. The example shown above is actually a famous example of a Markov chain, which is known for its memoryless state, meaning that it only depends on its previous state for computations. HMMs are slightly different from Markov chains in that HMMs are used when the emissions come from a set of states from systems that we are unable to actually observe. This is different from a Markov chain, where these hidden states are actually known, most commonly by researchers. An example of HMMs can be seen over here, where the transition probabilities and the emission probabilities are clearly labeled. For example, a transition probability of going to a self-hidden state to a virus is 5%, while a transition probability of staying in a hidden state is 95%. Furthermore, the nitrogenous base adenine is shown in the self-hidden state 25% of the time, while in the virus state it is only shown 16% of the time. When observing these large sequences, for example, A, T, A, A, C, G, A, A, the hidden states can go from self to virus, constantly depending on what is best for the algorithm. To take the entire probability of the hidden state joint emission probability, we take the product of three terms. The probability of starting with the self slash virus hidden state, the probability of having those specific emission probabilities if you have a predefined particular state, and the transition probabilities of switching to either a hidden state or just staying in the same hidden state. For example, if you wanted to find the probability of sequence ATCGA, staying in the self-hidden state for the same time, we have to take pi to the set of five and make x the sequence itself. Note that there are two to the fifth combinations of pi, either, either being in the self or the hidden state in all five ways. If you multiply the initial probability, the emission probabilities and the transition probabilities, you arrive at a low probability of four times 10 to the negative four, which is expected since you're multiplying so many low values. The goal of these HMMs are to find the hidden state sequence with the least probability. This can be any combination of self-hidden states or virus-hidden states. However, the computational runtime can get a bit laggy, being around 2 to the n possibilities, where n is the number of hidden states to run on explicitly. That's a lot of combinations to search through, even when you're just trying to look at 100 state sets. For the purpose of this video, we will only get to how this is handled. 
But note that there are computational biologists in the field that have been able to get this runtime down to polynomial runtime. This is due to an algorithm called the Viterbi algorithm, which uses dynamic programming to find the most optimal hidden path. For more information, look at the article description below. For scoring, or finding the probabilities of a certain hidden and emission vector, and decoding, or finding the hidden vector off of an emission vector for these hidden markup models, there are four different approaches to take, depending on whether you're scoring through one path or you're scoring through all paths. For scoring over one path, we simply need to take the joint probability of the hidden state vector and the emission state vector. While for all paths, we take the summation of the probabilities for the hidden state vectors of a certain emission vector. This is often used when we want to find how likely an emission vector is of occurring. In terms of the coding over one path, we can use the Viterbi algorithm as before. However, for finding the path containing the most likely state at any time point, we use a dynamic programming approach called posterior decoding. More information in the article description. These HMMs can be applied to CPG islands. Because CPG islands deplete over evolutionary time, they are often really rare. This is mainly due to one cytosine methylates, leading to a thiamine nitrogenous base. However, when they are next to an active promoter, this methylation is suppressed and the CPG region can survive. Therefore, detecting these CPG islands can highlight specific promoter regions inside of the human genome. HMMs are the key to tackling this issue, as the exact area of these CPG islands are unknown, so there's often a necessity to take a more unstructured approach. The GCH regions have higher emission probabilities for cytosine and guanine compared to adenine and thiamine. These promoter regions have probabilities of 30 and 42% for C and G, and only 15 and 13% for A and T. We can find the optimal state through these sequences if they have more C's and G's, for example. Thank you for watching till the end of my video. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions.